الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصدح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يدع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها And the worst of affairs are those things we really invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة Everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. We call the bid'at and dalala. Every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. We call the dalala to fill up. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. Thumma and madad. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if Allah chooses us to remain alive for ten days or so, we will be blessed to enter the month of Ramadan the blessed month of mercy and forgiveness. But again, as we have mentioned in the previous weeks that the Sahaba for six months, they would prepare for the next Ramadan. What have we done to prepare for its coming so that we can hit the ground running? And today's topic of discussion, today's reminder will be about a thing that can make your fast or can break your fast. And it has nothing to do with food and it has nothing to do with water. عن معاذ بن جابر رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا أخبرك برأس الأمر وعموده وذروة سلامه قلت بلى يا رسول الله فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رأس الأمر الإسلام وعموده الصلاة وذروة سلامه الجهاد ثم قال ألا أخبرك بملاك ذلك كله فقلت بلى يا رسول الله فأخذ بلسانه وقال كف عليك هذا أخذ بلسانه وقال كف عليك هذا فقلت يا نبي الله وإنا لمؤاخذون بما نتكلم به نتكلم به فقال ثقلتك أمك وهو يكب وهل يكب الناس على وجوههم أو قال على مناخرهم إلا حصائد ألسنتهم this hadith which we have in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi and it is great as it has in Sahih, the Prophet وسلم, he said to Mu'adh, shall I not inform you what is the head of the matter, its pillar and its peak? I said, yes, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, He said, the head of the matter is Islam. The pillar of that Islam is the prayer. <clears throat> and its apex, its highest point is jihad, the just jihad, the correct jihad behind an emir that leads the Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ told him, shall I tell you what is the foundation of all of this? The Islam, the prayer, the jihad, everything. He said, Bala Ya Rasulullah, of course, tell me, O Messenger of Allah ﷺ. He said, he grabbed a hold of his tongue. And he said, Kuf alayka hadha, restrain this. Restrain your tongue. I said, O Messenger of Allah ﷺ, will a person be taken to account for what he says in this life? So the Prophet ﷺ, he says, O oh, Mu'adh, may your mother be bereaved of you an expression to show extremity or exaggeration. O oh, Mu'adh, is there anything that throws people into the hellfire on their faces or on their, on their noses except the harvest of the tongue? Ibn Abbas he narrated that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, 
علموا ويسروا ولا تعسروا واذا غضب احدكم فليسكت This hadith which is authentic the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said teach and make things easy do not make things difficult and one of you when one of you gets angry let him be silent let him remain silent let him not speak عن ابي هريره رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الاخر فليقل خيرا او ليصمت The Prophet وسلم, he said in this hadith which we find in Bukhari and Muslim let him who believes in Allah in the last day so there's a, now something tying to your, your iman your belief in Allah and yawm al-yawm al-akhir the last day let him who believes in Allah in the last day say what is good or be silent zip your mouths if you got nothing good to say and Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu qal قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المسلم من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده والمهاجر من هجر ما نهى الله عنه رواه البخاري the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said a muslim is the one who avoids harming muslims with his tongue and his hands with his tongue and his hand that one the muslim to be regarded as a muslim by the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Other Muslims must be safe from you, from your speech, backbiting, slandering, lying, cheating. All of this comes back to that tongue. And must be safe from your hands, from you not striking them or harming them or doing an action with your hands that will harm the Muslim. And the muhajir, the immigrant, is the one who gives up and abandons all what Allah has made haram and forbidden. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, أَكْثَرُ خَطَايَ إِنَّ آدَمْ فِي لِسَانِهِ Shaykh al-Albani in Sahih al-Jami' he authenticated this hadith that the Prophet he said the most, the majority of the sins of the children of Adam the majority of the sins will be because of the tongue the majority of the sins that we will face Allah with will be because of that piece of meat that piece of flesh that sits between the two jaw bones and although it is small compared to the rest of the body it is the greatest reason for the sins so do not speak unless your speech is good Unless you'll bring a clear benefit. When there is any doubt, remain silent and don't say it. When the benefit in speaking or not speaking is equal to, is equal, عفواً, then the sunnah is to not speak. When you don't know, it's like 50-50. If I speak, it might be good. If I speak, it might be bad. Then the sunnah is to not speak. Because it is possible that, possible that your permissible speech can become impermissible or disliked. قال ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه يا لسان قل خيرا تغنم واسكت عن شر تسلم من قبل أن تندم ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه he said what means O oh tongue this was the ways of the sahaba and the companions to look at themselves in the mirror or to talk to themselves to bring themselves to account he said رضي الله عنه O oh tongue Speak goodness and you'll be rewarded. And remain silent and you'll be safe. Lest you become regretful. And how many times does it say that slip of the tongue makes you regret something for a lifetime? That slip of the tongue that you say to someone who you love or you really care about. Or to someone who's even strange but you see the shun, the evil that comes from it. Shaykh al he authenticated that statement of Ibn Mas'ud by the way. So guard your tongues on Sahel ibn Sa'ad. رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من توكل لي ما بين رجليه وما بين لحيه توكلت له بالجنة رواه البخاري the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said what means whoever guarantees to me the chastity of between what is legs or what is between his legs meaning they are private parts meaning they do not commit zina or فاحشة And whoever guarantees for me what is between his jaws, his tongue, from the backbiting, the slandering, the lying, the cheating, the falsely accusing, and the likes of the matters that the tongue is responsible for. Whoever guarantees these two areas, what is between the jaws of the tongue, what is between the legs of the private parts, then Allah's Messenger وسلم, he said, I guarantee for him Jannah. I guarantee for him paradise. عن أبي سعيد بن الخضري رضي الله عنه قال 
ورفع من النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا أصبح ابن آدم فإن الأعضاء كلها تكفر اللسان فتقول اتق الله فينا فإنما نحن بك فإن استقمت استقمنا وإن أعوججت أعوججنا رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث حسن أبو سعيد من الخضري he said and this is مرفوع mean it's elevated to the level of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and this hadith is Hassan in the Sunnah of Al-Tirmidhi. Abu Sa'id and he said, Al-Khudri, he said, when the son of Adam wakes up in the morning, all of his body parts, they bow down to that tongue. Can you imagine, usually the one being bowed, to, bowed down to is the largest one, or the strongest one, or the one who has the most in terms of mass, or whatever it may be. Yeah, you can bow down to someone who's powerful, or, or great, or a king, or whatever it may be. For what the people do, we only bow down to Allah, alhamdulillah. But he said when the, body, when the body wakes up, when you wake up all the body parts, they bow down to the tongue. And they say to the tongue, fear Allah regarding us because we're only a part of you. We're only a part of you. If you are good, if you are straight, then we're going to be good, we're going to be straight. But if you are crooked, if you are corrupt, then we're going to be crooked and we're going to be corrupt. It all comes back down to that tongue. Malik, he related from Zayd ibn Aslam, from his father, that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, came to, the, to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he was pulling on his tongue hard, like hurting, hurting himself. Pulling on his tongue. Again, what is he doing? He's, he's reckoning himself. He's bringing himself to account. He's reminding himself. He said, Ma ghafar Allahu lak. Umar, he said to Abu Bakr, what are you doing? Stop harming yourself. What is this that you're doing to yourself? Allah has forgiven you. Your uh, may Allah forgive you your sins. Stop this. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he replied to him, Inna hada awradni al-mawarid. He said, this has brought me to great, to dangerous places. To great danger. This tongue what we're warning myself and what we're warning each other about, this tongue, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the best, first best in this ummah, radiallahu anhu, after the Prophet <clears throat> warning himself, saying, this tongue has brought him to great places. And he was of the best who feared Allah, and worshipped Allah, and defended Islam, and defended the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa And look at what he's doing. This tongue has brought me to great places, to dangerous places. It's a great danger, and this hadith is in the Muwatta of Imam Malik, and it is authentic. Abu Sa'id, radiallahu anhu, he says, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَقُولُ مَنْ رَأَ مُنْكِرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ رَوَهُ النِّسَاءِ وَهَذَا حَدِيثٌ الصَّحِيحِ The Prophet ﷺ, he was heard to have said, in the authentic hadith, whoever amongst you sees an evil, let him change it with his hands. Of course, with wisdom. You don't go see an evil and go punch a person, for example. There should be wisdom. There should be knowledge of the situation. And you should approach things in the best of ways. But if you see an evil, the Prophet ﷺ said, change it with your hands. But in the if you cannot, then with your tongue. And if you can't do that, then at least hate it in your heart, but this is the weakest of faith. So why do we mention this? Because here now the Prophet ﷺ told us if we can't change an evil, then at least change it with our tongues if we can't change it with our hands. This is not what is being forbidden when we say to watch the tongue and guard the tongue. You watch the tongue, you guard the tongue from saying the haram, speaking the haram, backbiting and slandering and lying and falsely accusing and the likes of those matters, cheating. But when you see an evil, you can say good. You can call towards goodness. You can repel that evil or warn others of that evil. And this is not what is haram for the tongue to do. Uqba bin Amr, radiallahu anhu, he said, Sa'antu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, man najata. He asked him, how can salvation be achieved? What does salvation really mean? فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَمْسِكْ عَلَيْكَ لِسَانَكْ وَلْيَسَعَكَ بَيْتُكَ وَبْكِ عَلَى خَطِيئَتِكَ This hadith which is sahih in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ when he responded to Uqba about what is salvation, 
How can you save yourself? What does salvation mean? The Prophet ﷺ, he said to him, control your tongue. The first of the things he told him, control your tongue. Watch what you say. Watch what your tongue says and holds you responsible for. And reserve yourself to your home. Make your home sufficient for you. Keep yourself to your home. Meaning, don't always be about going out in the likes of these matters. And weep over your sins. Cry over the sins that you've committed in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, now we see therefore there are three types of speech. Three types of speech. The good speech. Number one, the good speech. The pure speech. The wholesome and honest speech. Telling the truth, even if it's against yourself. Even if it's against your family. Even if it's against your, your friends and your brothers and your sisters. We always speak the truth. The Qur'an, authentic hadith, dhikr, al-amr bin ma'aruf, al nahi al munkar joining the good, forbidding the evil, having upright character in your speech. Kindness, the Prophet ﷺ said, is not a part of something except that it beautifies it. The akhlaq, the adab, the way you speak, this is all part of good speech. The second type of speech, the evil speech, and this of course includes shirk and kufr. Disobedience to Allah, hypocrisy, lies, the backbiting, the slandering, the cursing, and it includes bid'ah. It includes innovations. And these bid'ah, these innovations, they're not what you think is good, so you do them. These are everything that the Prophet ﷺ did not do, or his companions did not do, that we have a narrative proof for. Then this is innovations. And I remind you here what Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah, he said, that a person who meets Allah with every sin, but he did not commit shirk, is better, is better than meeting Allah upon, with little sins, but you were upon an innovative belief. To show you the danger of bid'ah and innovation. Stick to the Qur'an and the sunnah as it was revealed. Don't change it. We are nobodies. Nobodies to change the deen of Allah Azza wa that he said to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the last type of speech is in between. It could be good or be bad, or it could be bad, so therefore it's better not to speak in those instances. Allah says, Allah says, What means? In Surah Al Isra. And tell my servants to say that which is the best. Only speak the good. If you don't got nothing good to say, don't say it. Keep it to yourself. You're only harming yourself when you speak bad about somebody else. Even if it be the truth, because that is what ghiba is. This ghiba, this bad bad is that you speak about somebody else, even if it's truthful about them, but you tell them it, you tell it to something else, and they are someone who would dislike that that thing be said about them. <coughs> this is ghiba. Namima, a worse degree. Now you're lying about something you saw someone do, or you heard from somebody, and you're spreading those false tales. Tell my servants to say that which is best, Indeed, shaitan, Satan, he induces dissension amongst them. Shaitan loves to see the dissension between the people, especially the husband and the wife. He loves to see the breaking up of relationships amongst the brothers and the sisters in Islam. Indeed, shaitan is ever to mankind a clear enemy. So especially with the believing servants, Allah commands us to speak and discuss in ways which are better or leave it off. If you got nothing good to say, don't say it as we mentioned with the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day should say what is quiet, uh, should say what is good, or be quiet, be silent. Shaitan, who al Adubul Mubin, he is the averse enemy, the avowed enemy, the open enemy. So treat him as you would treat your enemy in this life. The one who you want to get near you, or your family, or your loved ones, or your property, from the human yani, enemies that you may have, this is how you should treat shaitan, not wanting him to come even within the city that you live in, or your home is in, or your family is in, or your loved ones are in. Treat shaitan as an enemy. He wants mastery over your tongue. He wants mastery, because if he gets mastery over your tongue, it's going to all unwind. It will all come undone. Everything within you will come undone. He wants mastery over this piece of flesh between your two jaw bones. And the adu al the avowed enemy, so do not let him gain mastery over it. Imam al Sa'di, rahimahullah, with respect to this ayah we mentioned, he said this command is related to every speech 
that will bring a person closer to Allah, like the recitation of the Qur'an, like dhikr, remembrance of Allah, like enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, to address people with good and gentle speech. So good speech, it always leads to beautiful manners. Good speech always leads to people seeing the goodness, the truth about Islam. Oh, good speech always leads to the righteous deeds. For indeed, the one who controls his tongue, he will be able to control all of his affairs. Shaitan wants you to fail here. He wants you to have disagreements with one another, to be angry with one another, to say things that would harm one another so that you are permanently or for a long time broken up. Because it will lead to corrupting your deen and your dunya. So do not follow him when he incites you. In this way, may Allah protect us from shaitan and make us of those who control their tongues. أقول قل هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم أدعو الله أدعو الله يغفر لكم ذنوب. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. Your brothers, please move in close. It's a, it's a wet day outside. Please move in close to one another. You can straighten the lines later. And let your brothers who are coming in be able to have room to pray to rakas as they should do before they sit down. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'inuhu wa ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira wa da'at. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, what can make you or break you is a small piece of your body between the two jaws called your tongue. It can make you with the good that it spreads and it says, the protection of other people's faults that you may know that you won't speak it out, that you will conceal their faults, or it can break you by the backbiting and the slandering, the cursing, the lying, the obscenities, the cheating that your tongue can emit from itself. So remember the tongue, as we said, we mentioned all the parts where it can be bad. Remember it can be used for good. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhumah, he said, Kullu kalimatin qayyibatin sadaqa. The Prophet, or Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhumah, he said, Every good word you say is a sadaqa. And from many hadith of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Wal kalimatul qayyibatul sadaqa. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in many narrations said, And the good word is a sadaqa, it is a charity. To speak a good word, to smile. These things are good charities that you can do. Abdullah bin Mus, he narrated that a man said to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, indeed the legislative acts of Islam have become too much for me to do. So give me some injunction that I can do that is simple to carry out. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَا يَزَالُ لِسَانُكَ رَبًّا مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ the Prophet ﷺ said, let your, tongue, let your tongue not cease to become moist with the remembrance of Allah. And this hadith is Hassan in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi. He said, let your tongue always be wet with the remembrance of Allah. Your tongue can get you many rewards. Alhamdulillah, that phrase your tongue can say in good times and in bad. What? Alhamdulillah, it weighs down your scales. It will fill your scales with good deeds. All these phrases we've said many of times from subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, and the likes of these, they weigh down. Let your tongue say those things. Even when you're amazed, when you're hurt, when somebody gets you or stings you, say the good word. And always guard your tongue. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, and the Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, كلمتان خفيفتان على اللسان ثقيلتان في الميز ثقيلتان في الميزان حبيبتان إلى الرحمن سبحان الله وبحمده وسبحان الله العظيم رواه البخاري. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said there are two expressions that are easy for the tongue to say, very heavy on your scales if you say them, and very dear to الرحمن the entirely merciful one Allah عز وجل. And he said they are سبحان الله العظيم. Glory and protection be to Allah the Great One. Wa subhanallah wa bihamdih. And glory and uh, perfection be to Allah. And all praise and thanks be to Him. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let your tongue be one that says good. 
and hold it back from backbiting and slandering, false witness, cursing, insulting, lying, and the likes of these matters. And Ibn Rajab, radiallahu anhu, عفوا رحمه الله عن عطاء بن أبي رباح رحمه الله قال إن الرجل يتكلم في غضبه بكلمة يهدم بها عمل عمل ستين سنة أو سبعين سنة إن فتح الباري من رجل هنا رابور هي رابورتس عطاء بن أبي رباح may Allah have mercy on him said verily a man might speak a word in anger by which his good deeds of 60 years or 7 years will be destroyed. This is the danger of that tongue. <coughs> Look at this statement, 60 years or 7 years, imagine coming with so much good, so much good you did, but just one word in the time of ghadab, in the time of anger, and you don't repress yourself, and you say something, it can destroy years and years of good deeds. Related to the siyam that we're preparing for, why did we pick to remind ourselves about the tongue? Because we're going to see with what we'll mention here briefly that the tongue can break our fasting. Our fasting isn't just food and drink and desires, desire fulfillment from the spouses. So as we prepare for Ramadan, now maybe 10 days away, let us work on guarding that tongue. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن الله عز وجل قال كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصيام هو لي وأنا أجزي به والصيام جنة إذا كان يوم الصيام صيام أحدكم فلا يرفض ولا يسخب فإن, فإن شاتمه أحد أو قاتله فليقل إني صائم رواه النساء وهذا حديث صحيح The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he narrated in the hadith قدسي which is a statement of Allah Azzawajal that is not from the Qur'an, but it is Allah's words. Allah says every deed of the son of Adam is for him, except for the fasting. It is for me, and I can reward for it more than the 700 times. I will reward to it how I want, to the greatest degree, to the greatest power. <coughs> fasting is a shield, yani even a nod from the hellfire. If any one of you is fasting, let him not utter obscene talk nor raise his voice in anger. And if anyone insults you, you tell them in Nisa'in, I am fasting. So here's the advice. For that fasting to be accepted from Allah, do not utter obscenities, do not say bad things, do not get angry. And if people approach you trying to draw you into that, you tell them I'm fasting and you walk away. Let them tell you, oh, you're weak, you don't want to talk to me, you're the better person. If you can't say something good, walk away from it. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من لم يضع قول الزور والعمل به فليس لله حاجة في أن يضع طعامه وشرابه رواه البخاري The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the Hadith Whoever does not leave off saying evil words or evil deeds while they are fasting Allah does not need you to leave your food and your drink You're making yourself starve for nothing you're making yourself thirsty for nothing. Allah does not need it if your tongue is not fasting too. If you're not holding back from saying what is good. If you're not holding back from saying obscene words and evil words and doing evil deeds, then your fasting is not needed by Allah Azza wa Jal. وعن الشعبي عن علي رضي الله عنه أنه كان يفتب إذا حضر رمضان ثم يقول هذا الشهر المبارك الذي فرض الله صيامه وَلَمْ يَفْرِدْ قِيَامَهُ أَلَا إِنَّ الصِّيَامُ لَيْسَ مِنَ الطَّعَامِ وَالشَّرَابِ وَلَكِنْ مِنَ الْكَذِبِ وَالْبَاطِلِ وَالْلَغُ قال الشعبي كان يقول ذلك بعد صلاة الفجر وصلاة العصر This narration that we're about to mention الشعبي and it is in the sunan al-kubra for al-bayhaqi and it is authentic الشعبي he reported that Ali رضي الله عنه he would deliver a sermon when the month of Ramadan arrived. And he would say in that khutbah, this is the blessed month of Ramadan. The month in which Allah has obligated fasting for the one who has reached the age and, and, and has fulfilled all the conditions. And he did not obligate the night prayers. But he obligated fasting and not the night prayers. Certainly fasting is not merely from food and drink. But rather fasting is you fasting from lying from falsehood, 
from Vain Talk. And he would say this after Fajr and after Asr, at the beginning of Ramadan, after those prayers, he would mention this. Fasting is from vain talk, from lying and from falsehood. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, while we should have all been preparing for Ramadan for months now, the time is, is here, 10 days away, if Allah allows us to see it. The young one here, the healthy one here, the rich one here, the educated one here, has no guarantee of reaching it. If Allah lets us reach it, it's because He wills for us to reach it. And it would be a blessing with no doubt. But we got to prepare. Because as Abu Bakr, عنه, when he would pull on that tongue of his, saying that this brought me to dangerous places, then we see, after all you have heard today, the danger that the tongue can cause. It can ruin your fasting. It can ruin your prayers. It can ruin everything you have. This is al muflis al muflis the bankrupt one. Atadruna man al muflis who was that bankrupt one? The Prophet ﷺ, he, they responded to him, someone who got no money, got no property, doesn't, doesn't own nothing. He said, no, al muflis man ata yawm al-qiyamah, bi siyami, bi salatihi, wa siyamihi, wa zakatihi. He comes on the day of resurrection, the bankrupt one. The one who's got nothing comes on the day of resurrection with prayers, with fasting, with zakat. ولكن يأتي قد شتم هذا وقذف هذا وأكل مال هذا وسفق دم هذا. He is the one who comes on that day and what? He abused others with his tongue. He slandered others with his tongue. He insulted others and name called others with his tongue. He spilled the blood of people. He falsely accused people with his tongue. This will make all your good deeds vanish like dust. So we seek Allah's protection, we seek Allah's guidance to have tongues which is say what is good or we be silent. So let us work on that now and at all times so that we can enter Ramadan and not just fast food and drink but fast with our tongues, with our bodies, with our limbs, all in subservience and obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahumma khalil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat, al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat, al-Ahyat, al-Muhum wa al-Mu'at, inna ka tasmiyam al-Qurim al-Mujid al-Da'wat, ya muqallib al-Qurub sabit qurubna ala deenik, ya muqallib al-Qurub sabit qurubna ala deenik, ya muqallib al-Qurub sabit qurubna ala deenik, Allahumma a'izzal Islam al-Muslimin, wa ansurna ala a'adaik wa a'adaik al-Din, Allahumma ansur ikhwanana wa akhwatana fi Palestine wa fi kudda makan, Allahumma nafis qurubuhum, وثبت أقدامهم وارحم موتاهم واشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين